Hi there guys, Sam here, welcome back to another video. And I wanted to go through, um, yeah, a little bit of a walk around of my Mark 7 Golf R. And this video is kind of to show what the Mark 8 Golf R has to live up to. So yeah, I'll continue walking around the car, we'll get into a chat and we'll get into the drive of my car. And yeah, the expectations are high, but this is what uh, yeah, the Mark 8 Golf R has to live up to. So other aspects that the car kind of has to live up to inside the interior of the Mark 8 Golf R is, well, <laughs> the R has kind of been a, yeah, a statement for sort of being minimalistic, basically. There's not much extra, you know, if I turn on the actual lights and stuff, you know, blue dials here, that sort of goes blue. You can just about see that there. Um, yeah, the infotainment, this is a Mark 7, so 2017. Um, yeah, it's all very subtle, all very nice. You get really nice sort of cloths seats as well you can get leather seats as well but i quite like these um almost like recaro type seats loads of space in the back loads of nice visibility <laughs> i love my free door as you've probably told told from well you can probably gather from me sort of going around the outside um nice and clean my car which is always good now yeah there's there's a few things that kind of the mark 8 golf has to live up to and this car was really, really iconic. And, you know, yes, I love the manual gearbox, as you can tell. And that's something that's not looking like it's going to be a part of a car in the UK anyway, and potentially Europe as well. Um, it looks like in the States, they probably will get it. Yeah, so free pedals, you're only going to get that in, well, in this Mark 7, basically nothing else. Um, you get cool little dials. I always do like these. They're quite fun to sort of play around with. And um, yeah, I've actually sort of cleaned out the interior as well to make it all nice. Um, frameless mirrors, all cool. There's a few little like quirky cubby holds and stuff like that. If you're not aware, like stuff under here, um, like lined a little bit as well. So it's quite nice in here. It's lined um, and that's quite nice. And actually something, I'm not sure if this is in the Golf 8 or in the ID3, but you lose about that chunk of space, which is actually quite a lot. Um, for for the right-hand drive market. <laughs> um, they didn't switch it over right with the steering columns or something because they just didn't put the effort in. Um, and another sort of aspect of sort of like the Golf 8 sort of being, well, yeah, compromised a little bit, let's just say with, um, yeah, cost cuttings, you know. It just looks like that this was more of a time where <laughs> VW were really on top of its game. And I, I really hope the Mark 8 Golf R is, yeah, it's just the same. But let's go for like a short little drive and, um, yeah, we'll go from there. The one thing that is actually quite interesting is the noise is actually really quite nice. Um, and something which, unfortunately on the Nürburgring, it seems the Mark 8 Golf R has lost a little bit, unfortunately, um, which is a bit sad. A good sounding car, and that's not something... Yeah, just from what I've heard from like the Nürburgring, it doesn't sound like it's... Um, all that great from the car going round. I've heard other cars going round with all the OPF filters and everything, and they don't sound that bad, but for whatever reason, the Mark 8 Golf R is not really pushed to being a great sounding car. Now, is that a be all or end all? Probably not for people in this kind of market for the car, but I think it's got a lot to live up to to basically compete with this. This is its benchmark this is what it has to kind of improve on um and do we think it will get there you know i hope so you know i think this is a great car and i'm looking forward to the announcement as i mentioned on the 4th of november and i'm looking to see how it's going to fit in as being the best car out of all the hot hatches out there out the club sport out the gti um yeah and, and i love the sort of global worldwide type appeal 
And I think it's what made, has made the Golf R so sort of special. You know, I, I don't actually know if the Club Sport is actually a car which is available in every single country. So please let me know in the comments actually about that because something I do want to know. If it's in Australia and if it's in America or if it's in around Europe or if it was something unique to the UK, I do know we get limited edition models. But that's why I think the R is a bit more special. I think it, it kind of brings everyone together really and um, yeah, sold in so many countries. And, and that's why it's such a kind of big topic on my channel, not just so because I have a Mark 7 Golf R, but just because of what it kind of represents and what it is. Yeah, and there's um, lots to live up to, but lots to be excited about. Let me know what you want to see for just from an improvement from a, you know, from a case of a Mark 7 Golf R or 7.5 to a Mark 8 Golf R. What would you want to see and what you are looking forward to in the announcement, basically? You know, can it live up to this car? Can it look as good? It's not going to be a free door. It's not going to be a manual, um, certainly for most of us. Um, but, you know, we kind of got to live with that on the kind of looks front and the engagement front. It's going to have a DSG gearbox, it's going to have four-wheel drive, it's going to have the same engine. It might have a tiny bit more power, whether it's 10 brake horsepower, 30 brake horsepower, we just don't know. Um, quality issues, it seems like they're going to be down a little bit. Little things that they've lost from, yeah, just from the state of the economy and trying to make a mass product in so many different, yeah, so many different countries. But I'm looking forward to it. It's got a lot to live up to. Um, this is what it has to live up to. And will it get there? I don't know, I, I kind of hope so. I really do think we're just going through a stage where, yeah, the whole, <laughs> yeah, it's, it's a massive change for cars in general, you know, we've all got, obviously, problems with coronavirus and stuff like that, but I just think the age of what we're seeing, particularly in Europe, um, I don't know what it's like quite in other regions, um, but yeah, we're seeing so many changes, and yeah, you know, this Mark 8 Golf R is probably going to be the end of it, to be honest, the next sort of phase has to be electric. Can't see it being, yeah. I can't see it being anything else. Um, that's kind of why they changed like the R badge to make it a little bit more quirky compared to this one. But um, you know, it is what it is, and we're gonna have to kind of accept it and embrace it, whatever the future holds. But I do think this is the last of what we're kind of known of and what's kind of built up such a good popularity of the Golf R, which is why it's worth talking about. Will it be better than this? I personally think VW are at the top of their game when they were making this car um, sort of seven, eight years ago when they were designing it. But yes, as I continue to have an enjoyable cruise around in the Golf Far, um, you know, thanks so much for watching. Let me know your thoughts in the comments. Have a fantastic rest of your day, your weekend, and can it live up to this car? That's the kind of question of this video. Um, can the Mark 8 Golf Far live up to this? Um, yeah, that's, that's its benchmark. Hopefully it can do it. Hopefully it can uh, bring out a, a, a cracking car that we've seen a couple of weeks that I've mentioned on this channel. And um, yeah, I think everyone will be, <laughs> be happy with the results. But let's see. Um, maybe I'm a bit glass half empty, but um, yeah, I think financial issues for everyone and cost-cutting measures might um, might make it a little bit more challenging than potentially this car was. Well, the, yeah, the issues this car had to have on, on top of itself when the Mark 7 was being created. So yeah, different era, different times. This is what we have to live with. But yeah, let's see exactly what we get. So exciting times ahead. And look, even blue skies now. So how great is that? <laughs> um, thanks so much for watching. Have a fantastic rest of your day. Looking forward to the Mark 8 Golf R. Please subscribe for plenty more content to come. And I will see you again next time. Um, yeah, thanks for watching. Cheers, guys.